Hi guys, Brian here from the gas station. Welcome to the gas station. I got something really fun today. This is very cool. What I have here for you guys is the Mamiya 645 Pro TL. It's a mouthful. Anyway, I, I'm sure you can tell that I am a big fan of medium format. I love medium format cameras. I have a ton of them. I love them. I shoot them. I love the big negative. I love the feel of a, a big, nasty beast of a camera. Um, I showed you guys my Hasselblad last time. Uh, this camera, nothing but cool. Um, this, there's a whole line of Mamiya 645 cameras. Um, this particular camera was sort of the last in the line of the um, manual focus uh, cameras. This is the top of the line of the manual focus line. They went after this. They went into the AF series of cameras, which were the autofocus cameras. Um, they are different. There are differences. They're not really interchangeable with parts and stuff like that. Um, pretty much from there was there's a few generations. Again, the original uh, 645s aren't really compatible uh, with these. The, the one commonality though between these is the lens mount. So the lenses are, are largely compatible. Um, and so you can swap swap those. And Mamiya glass, my friends, is amazing glass. It's really great stuff. Um, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, I don't think you would be disappointed in any way whatsoever um, getting Mamiya stuff and getting the Mamiya glass. It's just, it really is good. Mamiya, Mamiya, however you want to pronounce it, that's fine. I say Mamiya, you say Mamiya. Let's get started with the review. So, long and short of again, Mamiya glass is great glass. Tons of Mamiya glass out there. Very inexpensive. Super high quality. Uh, great, great way to get into medium format. Um, this is not a Lomo camera, but you'll spend less on this probably, or a, a similar setup than a full Lomo setup. Now I'm not putting down Lomo, but you're going to get really great, super sharp, pro quality images uh, out of this camera, can, you know, if you can shoot that well. But the, the, you, this, this camera will not be your limitation um, if you're trying to take great pictures. This camera is only going to help you, it's going to move you forward. So I'm gonna, let me tell you a little bit about this camera. Now I'm not going to go through the whole line of Mamiya and what's different between this and that. I'll point out some stuff here and there, but for the most part this is the 645 Pro TL. TL is basically uh, the TL part of that is uh, the fact that this does uh, through the lens metering for your flash. So that's that's the main difference. You, and you might see the Mamiya 645 Pro and there's the Super and stuff like that. They're largely the same camera. There are differences between them. There are differences, you know, along the lines, but they're largely the same setup and style of camera. So let me just go through this camera a little, little bit. Let me show you how modular it is and all sorts of stuff. This is just very, very cool stuff. On here, what I have is the standard 80 millimeter f2.8 lens, which in its own right is really just a wonderful lens. They actually make a 80 millimeter 1.9, which is, I believe, one of the fastest uh, medium format lenses around ever or something. Um, yeah, it's if you can find the 1.9, great lens, very cool, very great out of focus um, areas. Uh, by the way, I'm changing uh, bokeh. I'm going to switch that to out of focus areas. So uh, we're going to call it UFA. So the <laughs> UFA in the back is great. So when you see the picture with great out of focus area, you go UFA. So <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I'm tired. But anyway, um, yeah, the 50 millimeter 1.9, this 80 millimeter f 2.8, they go, you know, 30 millimeters. There's tons of wides available for these. Um, great, great camera. Um, and the lens comes off here on the side. There's a button right here. You pull that back and then you turn and then the lens comes off and you have an SLR um, single lens reflex. The mirror does go up when you, uh, when you press the shutter and, uh, 
it's a, it does block out the viewfinder. It's not like a range finder where it just stays uh, constant throughout. Um, I'm going to give you a quick run around on the camera, on the front of the camera. Here, this is a switch. Uh, for this is a shutter button here. So um, if you don't have this grip on it, I'm going to I'm going to disassemble this camera in a minute. But if you don't have this grip on, you can use this as a shutter button. With the grip on, the shutter button is here. Oh, I hit it by accident. So it's winding. It's doing its thing. Anyway. Um, I'll shut that off. But there's an on-off switch here. This is basically what they call the SV kit. I'm assuming that's Super Value kit. Um, it's sort of a lower end uh, finder, but it's an AE finder, so it's an auto exposure. So there's a light meter built into this camera that does affect what happens on the lens. So it is going to, you know, sort of a program mode, I guess, as it were. Um, and that is built into this camera, and it, that that functionality comes from this viewfinder here. So. All right, so back back to the front of the camera. This is an on-off switch for this shutter button, and it's also uh, the switch for the self timer. Um, this button on the bottom here is the battery check, which will light that up if you have good battery action happening there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just generally on the front of the camera, there's auto and manual switch on these lenses. So if you put it into automatic or you know um, auto exposure mode. This needs to be an A. Uh, if you want to do stop down metering, you switch it to M. Uh, the top of this here, again, this is the finder. This is a uh, what they call a, a reflex finder. It's a mirrored finder. And um, it is the, the image that you would see through the lens. And it has a built-in diopter adjustment there. So if you wear glasses, this finder is really wonderful if you wear glasses. It's big, bright, beautiful. It's easy to see through. No problems. Really love it. Uh, really, really enjoying that. Um, shutter speeds, as opposed to like if you go into the Hasselblad, unless you're going to one of the uh, focal plane shutter Hasselblads, which go up to one two thousandth of a second, this one actually goes up to a thousandth, uh, one one thousandth of a second, which is pretty, pretty good on a big uh, medium format camera. Um, flash sync is at one sixtieth. Again, with this camera, there's lots of options. There are lenses that are made which have. Uh, the shutter in the lens, a leaf shutter in the lens. You can hook that up to this camera and get higher shutter speeds if you do that. Again, how deep do you want to go down this rabbit hole? That's up to you. But I'm going to show you again more about this basic camera. Uh, hot shoe mount. This uh, here or down here, I'm not sure which one of these ports. Anyway, one of these ports is for a, um, a remote release. Um, and there's an adapter you can get so it's a remote release with a standard plunger otherwise you have to buy a proprietary one which works with the camera and you know, they have funky plugs and stuff like that so if you're using a remote release that's that's up to you strap lug mirror lockup right here that locks up the mirror reduce camera shake um, hot shoe on the side uh, as with most uh, cameras in this sort of SLR uh, arrangement there's a dark slide here that you have to pull out when you're uh, about to take your picture and that actually has a storage space uh, in the back right here so you just store your dark slide there when you're shooting take it out when you're all done put it in there when you want to change backs or uh, do anything like that um, to change backs on this camera again the dark slide has to be in push down and this pops up and then your back comes right off the camera which is very very cool um, ISO is set on the back which is really nice because if you have, if you put in like 400 speed film in here you set this to 400 if you have another back and you want to shoot you know 100 speed or 200 speed you set that on that so everything is done from the back and that communicates with the uh, with the viewfinder and that communicates with the shutter and the uh, uh, the shutter mechanism and the shutter speeds of the camera itself so really just everything sort of does work really nicely together um, so again when you have these film backs you can take the film back off mid roll swap out put on a different back if you want you can when you reload these you can also have the option of just opening the back pulling the spool and this spool hold this film holder here you load your film up in there and then you dump it right into the back put that on make sure your dark slides in wind it all on whatever you're loaded ready to go you just grab it and put that right on your camera and you're ready to rock and roll and your camera will uh, will adjust everything to suit based on the ISO um, within that uh, film back. Very cool stuff. 
Um, let me see what else do we have on this side. Uh, again, I have the grip on here. This is a motor. The grip is is also a motor drive, uh, so this will actually wind on the camera. So I, I don't know if you remember on my Hasselblad EL that automatically wound the film. So you take a picture and it advances to the next roll. This is an option also on the camera. This comes off like that and then what you can do is if you want to kind of shrink this thing down you can do it. Um, you can put on a standard winder as well. So you can, well, let's turn that on and let me pull out my dark slide here and just for demonstration purposes I need to turn this to multi exposure uh, so it can do multiple exposures but here so I would wind and then take my picture so you can do it manually if you want um, if you rather use the, the standard twist style you can do that and just twist on, take your picture, or if you want to wind on, you can use the winder too, which is really nice. So this is sort of like the incredible shrinking camera, which is really kind of cool. Now let's say I want to, and this also still works with the uh, the automatic metering of this, um, of, of the, uh, the reflex finder. Um, it does have uh, shutter speeds down to four seconds, I believe. Yep, four, yeah, four seconds in bulb. Um, so not a big long exposure camera unless you do it on bulb and then time it yourself. Uh, but all shutter speeds are done or, or changed right here actually. And you would press this little button to take it off the auto exposure uh, or off your flash metering. And then it'll cycle through to the AE settings right there. But let's say I have a meter, I want to go outside and I want to make this thing even smaller. Well you can do that. The viewfinder pops off and you can now put on a waist level finder here which and this just clicks right in there and the waist level finder pops up here and we're starting to, again this thing's getting really tiny and there's a hundred percent light tight uh... finder so you look down into your viewfinder and you can focus and then well, we have to wind on and then take your shot so, <laughs> yeah, you can't use, that's a good point, you can't use the auto exposure settings with the waist level finder. You have to meter on your own. So if it's in the AE mode, it's not going to work. You have to set your own shutter speed and your aperture settings, <coughs> excuse me, in order to take your picture. So here we focus, we've set our aperture shutter speed because we're using our light meter or our sunny 16 rule, and boom, there we go. We take the picture, there's a great little, um, I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, there we go. Fine focus uh, lens, and you can get different diopters for these. These are really wonderful for getting your fine focus and getting super sharp uh, uh, focus in, on your pictures. Uh, that just folds down. Give it, give it a little pinch and a push, and that goes down. Another cool thing, if you're just kind of like if you're working with wider lenses, or um, you want to kind of just like move, and you don't want to be stuck in the finder, it comes with a little what they call a sports finder. And the sports finder is basically um, little frame lines that are set up. And you can get masks for here. This didn't come with the masks, but I'm not going to use that anyway. But you can uh, sort of set up your shot and look through here and see what your, your framing is going to be. Very hard to focus unless you're doing uh, your zone focus and you've pre-focused uh, your lenses. So, um, you know, so I would set this at, uh, let's say, F, let's set it for F8 and focus to, to whatever the distance is, 20 feet to infinity, everything's going to be in focus. So uh, zone focusing is kind of fun. You can do that with this and then put that all uh, back down. This hood would come off. I'm not going to take it off right now, but yeah, the hood comes off. So you can actually get this thing is to be a compact little, little setup. And you can just go out and shoot. Uh, if you want to use it more like an SLR and put everything up to your eye, everything is really interchangeable. You kind of just take stuff and you pop it on and there you go and then it's working. Um, you know, you, know, you want to go with the motor grip. You don't feel like messing with the winding anymore. You just kind of put that on and boom, you're, you're ready to go. This thing really is a professional setup, thus the Pro and 645 Pro TL. It, it is a professional use camera. Um, it's composite 
plastic on the outside. I'm assuming there's metal in this chassis here. Um, the camera is much lighter than my Hasselblad. Um, it's like night and day. Um, it is really comfortable. It's a nice camera to hold. Oh, I also have here a Polaroid back. So you can shoot um, Polaroid. Actually, what, let's do a Polaroid right now. I think that'll be kind of fun. So let's get our back off here. Uh, see if we can do it. Oh, my, my dark slide. You got to put it in the dark slide. So yeah, this camera, these cameras are all about process. You got to kind of do things in the right step or it's not going to work out. So this slips onto the back there. That clicks in. Okay, you set your ISO. I already have some Polaroid film in here. I have the, F, the uh, FP3000B. Uh, um, and um, we're going to set it to the auto exposure. Let's see how it does. Let's see. And I'm going to take a picture of me filming you guys. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Is everything working here? Alright. Okay. Oh, I gotta take out the dark slide again. <laughs> again, it's all about process, my friends. So this is probably a bad idea to do impromptu on video, but what the heck, huh? All right, so let's see. Let's get that in focus. And say cheese. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna pull this. And get that, I'm gonna count. To 20. We're actually not going to count. I'm just going to talk for a few more minutes while this is uh, being processed. But yeah, Polaroid backs you can get for this. There's actually a 35 millimeter back you can get for this. So you can run your 35 millimeter film right on here um, and you, you know use that as well. Uh, works with the different finders. There's other finders available too, which are really cool. Uh, get yourself uh, you know something new and different. Uh, lenses again are super cheap. Telephoto lenses really cheap. Uh, wider ones get more expensive. The fast ones, uh, that 1.9 I was telling you about, that's going to get a bit more expensive. But there's so much cool stuff you can you can do. Oh, also by the way, with this grip, the SV grip, it takes a 2CR5 battery, which is a lithium battery that goes in there. They're a little bit pricey, and then it takes another. Oh, I got another one here. This is a V28PX. So, or it's a, a 4SR44 battery. Uh, so you can get those, uh, put those in here, and uh, yeah, you're gonna be doing a little bit on batteries. But anyway, let's see how our picture took out, how our picture came out of you guys using the auto exposure here. All right, that well, came out well, a little overexposed. I could have messed with that a little bit. So there it is, a little picture. And what it does is it puts it sort of inside the, uh, the Polaroid also you don't fill up the full frame of the Polaroid which is kind of too bad but um, this was designed more for proofing uh, for professional photographers to get the lighting right uh, when you're shooting film and you don't have a chance to come back and do it again um, it really is uh, meant you know to for a for proof just to see how it turns out and I kind of kind of like the format actually I've been shooting them all morning kind of having fun with these but there we go instant photography with the Mamiya 645 um, Pro TL. So, anyway, um, all kinds of cool stuff. I, I don't know. I, I think this is a great camera. I think it's a bargain uh, in the world of uh, medium format. Um, definitely cheaper than Hasselblad. I don't, my opinion, I don't think you're sacrificing too much in quality. I mean, if you're a professional and you, you know, you're getting paid to do all this stuff and you can afford to go for the Hassy stuff, go for it. Hasselblad's great stuff. I love it. I'm never going to say a bad thing about it. Um, again, it's like Leica. Uh, Hasselblad is sort of like the Leica, I would say, of, of medium format, or Contax would be also, uh, with the Contax 645. But this is going to do everything you need to do. If, if you wanted to get a comparable setup with this, and let's say we even went with the 1.9 lens on here, because I know Contax has the Carl Zeiss uh, 50 millimeter, or 80 millimeter F2, actually. Um, you're looking at least for the body about a thousand bucks then you're looking you know probably a, I don't know another ton of money for the lens I mean you can get a comparable setup do the same basic things with this um, for well under a thousand dollars like oh my goodness well under a thousand dollars you know if the whole thing cost you five or six hundred bucks I'd be really surprised so 
Um, I don't know, great deal in camera land on this, I think. So, I don't know. Anyway, that actually didn't come out too bad. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it's instant photography. And the Fuji Fuji film, it's readily available. The FP100C or the FP3000B. Instant photography, pop-up, uh, waist level finder, options, grips, motors, all that stuff. Can't go wrong. So, anyway, guys, um, film lives. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. So, uh, film's where it's at. I love film. I love digital, too, but I think film's got that certain something. So, uh, anyway, Brian, the gas station. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. The Mamiya uh, 645 Pro TL. Uh, just another one. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. If I miss something, I'm sorry. I'll try and fix it later. Uh, but just let me know in the comments. I, I appreciate it. So, anyway, that's it. Thanks, guys. Take care. Please like, comment, and subscribe.